Imagine a road that's 24,000 miles long, wrapping all the way around the Earth. Crazy, right? Building this epic highway would mean constructing over 600,000 bridges and tunnels, and spending a sum that could rival the GDP of several countries combined. If I assume an average driving speed of 60 miles per hour on highways, without any brakes or delays, the total journey time would be approximately 400 hours or about 16.5 days of non-stop driving. But that's never possible. So, if you take an average of 8 hours per day of driving, with the remaining time for meals, refueling, and overnight stays, the total journey could extend to about 70 to 80 days. Plus, this road would be a massive engineering feat, because it will run into a diverse type of soil structure and weather conditions. So, let's dive into the wild idea of creating a road that circles the planet, exploring the jaw-dropping possibilities and insane challenges of this once unthinkable project. Uh, how would we connect the roads around the world? There are basically four major road systems out there. The biggest one is the Eurofrasia system, which covers Europe, Asia, and Africa. Since these continents are all linked by land, you'd think the roads would be two, right? Well, not exactly. The truth is, it's actually impossible to drive from Africa to Asia completely overland because of the Suez Canal. This canal is why you need to take a boat to get from Europe to Asia. Instead of driving, there are only three bridges over the canal, but the road system is still considered one big network. Now, let's talk about Australia, the sixth largest country in the world. It has its own major road system, but if you travel a bit, you'll end up in the Americas, both of them. Just like Africa and Asia, the Americas aren't technically connected because of the Panama Canal. But that's not a huge issue, since there are several bridges over the canal. The real problem is the Darien Gap, a remote swampy area between Panama and Colombia. No roads go through there because it's dangerous and controlled by paramilitary groups and drug lords. The cost and risk of building a road through that mess just aren't worth it. So, North and South America end up with two separate road systems. To sum it up, these four regions each have their own road networks, but none of them connect to each other. So how can we make it so you can drive from New York to London and back? All right, if we still kick off our epic global highway in Cape Town, South Africa, and wrap it up in Punta Arenas, Chile, yes, that's the southernmost city in the world with more than 100,000 people, the road from Cape Town to Kinshasa is all set and will take about 51 hours to drive. But here's where things get tricky. Right after Kinshasa, there's no bridge over the Congo River to Brazzaville, so you'll have to take a ferry. To make this global highway dream a reality, we need to build a bridge, which would set us back around $444 million. If we get that sorted, you can keep driving from Brazzaville to Edelia in Morocco without any hitches using the existing roads. So far, driving through Africa would take about 7 days and 6 hours. Here, the major issue is the Mediterranean Sea. It's only 14 kilometers wide between Morocco and Spain, but the depth of the water, nearly 3,000 feet in some places, is a massive headache. Building a bridge here would be a colossal engineering feat and would cost around $24 billion. Assuming we get that done, you'd be in Algeciras, Spain, and from there, you could drive all the way to Magadan, Russia, across Eurasia, Asia on current highways. That trip would take an additional 7 days and 11 hours. So, the total drive from Cape Town to Magadan would clock in at 14 days and 17 hours. For people living in the UK, you can just take your car through the channel and hit the French highways to Magadan. But if you're in Australia, New Zealand, or Indonesia, I'm sorry, connecting to this highway system with our current technology isn't possible. The gap from these places would require a bridge spanning at least 165 kilometers over open ocean, which is just too much of a stretch right now. So here's the deal. If the rest of the road system is up and running and you're living anywhere in Eurasia, you could easily drive to Magadan. Magadan. But getting from Magadan to North America is a whole different story. You can also check out the map of Russian highways. Yeah, it's mostly empty. To connect to Wellen, a tiny village near the Bering Strait, we'd need to build over 2,000 kilometers of new highways through this freezing vast land. The bridge alone to span the gap to mainland Alaska would cost a jaw-dropping $105 billion because of the icy conditions. 
The nearest town in Alaska is 160 kilometers from where the bridge would be, so we'd need another highway to reach that town. And since this town isn't well connected to the rest of Alaska's road system, even more highways would need to be built from scratch to connect all the way to Fairbanks. From there, you could finally use existing roads for a 129-hour drive to Yavisa, Panama. But the road system ends at the Darien Gap, so if that area gets safer, and they build a highway through it someday, you could drive all the way to Punta Arenas in Chile, the southernmost big city in the world. To build this global highway system, some serious construction would be needed. The longest stretch would be from Cape Town to Punta Arenas, covering over 52,000 kilometers. It would take more than 28 days of driving, and the whole thing would cost at least $233 billion. That's just over 1% of the US GDP, or about 38% of what the US military spends in a year. It sounds like a lot, but remember, you could just fly from Cape Town to Punta Arenas for about $2,000 in 27 hours, instead of spending 675 hours driving. Now, let's say all these roads and bridges are built, and you kick off your journey in South America, starting in Ecuador. What would your whole journey look like? Suppose you're heading east through Colombia and into Brazil. Here, you must expect scorching wheat and extremely humid weather, so make sure your car's air conditioning is in top shape before you hit the road. You'll drive over mountains and the Amazon River. If you're tempted to take a dip in the Amazon, just remember it's home to piranhas, though they're usually pretty chill, so swimming is at your own risk. Your Amazon adventure is just the start. Soon you'll hit Brazil's Atlantic coast and enter the first underwater stretch, the Great Atlantic Tunnel. Sadly, it's not the most exciting view, but don't worry, land pops back up soon enough. After days of driving, you'll reach Africa. You'll cruise through the savannas, swamps, and dense rainforests of Gabon and Congo, then into the deserts of Kenya and Somalia. Keep an eye out for elephants, gorillas, buffalo, and leopards. Definitely worth the long tunnel stretches. Then you'll run out of land and dive into another underwater tunnel, the Great Indian Tunnel. Next up is Indonesia. With its 17,000 islands scattered around the equator, you'll cross from island to island through a series of short tunnels. Every time you pop back up to land, you'll be greeted with stunning scenery, volcanoes, rice fields, and lush rainforests. After all that driving, a day at the beach will be a perfect break. Next on the list is the Great Pacific Tunnel. This one's a doozy. It's the longest underwater stretch of the whole trip. At the end, you'll hit the Galapagos Islands, a wildlife paradise that's a real treat for the eyes after the marathon drive. Finally, you'll drive a bit more through one last short underwater tunnel and end up back in Ecuador. Congrats! You've just completed a road trip around the globe. If you were zooming along at 100 kilometers per H, you'd be stuck in underwater tunnels for 12 whole days. With breaks for rest and sightseeing, the whole trip would stretch to at least two months. Hope you've got the time and money for such a long vacation. As cool as this idea sounds, the environmental toll would be massive. Building this highway would mess up ecosystems both on land and in the ocean. Plus, your car would pump out nearly double the carbon dioxide of an average car over a year. Looks like a highway running along the equator is just a pipe dream. So, are you a fan of road trips? If so, what was your favorite and longest road trip? Drop your ideas in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more exciting videos. See you in the next adventure!